Never waste a good crisis. And when it comes to the economic crisis, don't waste it when it, it can have a very positive impact. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. The way we're going to win over the long term is not just militarily. We've got to win over uh, hearts and minds. And what that means is we've got to invest in countries that uh, have no educational infrastructure, have no uh, means for young people to, to get ahead. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. Stay tuned for Politics and Religion. Well, a very interesting story coming to us today from Jerusalem. Jerusalem city wall dates back to King Solomon. Ancient stone fortifications that were recently uncovered outside the walls of Jerusalem's old city date back some 3,000 years to the time of King Solomon and support the biblical narrative about the era, according to archaeologist Dr. Eilat Mazar. If the age of the wall is correct, the finding would be an indication that Jerusalem was home to a strong central government that had the resources and manpower needed to build massive fortifications in the 10th century B.C. It's the most significant construction we have from first temple days in Israel, Mazar said, and it means that at that time, the 10th century, in Jerusalem, there was a regime capable of carrying out such construction. The section of the city wall revealed, which is 70 meters long and 6 meters high, so that would be uh, 210 feet long and approximately 18 feet high, is located in the area known as the Ophel, between the city of David and the southern wall of the Temple Mount. An inner gatehouse for access into the royal quarter of the city was uncovered in the city wall complex along with a royal structure adjacent to the gatehouse and a corner tower that overlooks a substantial section of the adjacent Kidron Valley. The Kidron Valley separates the Mount of Olives from the Temple Mount itself. The excavations in the Ophel area were carried out over a three-month period under the auspices of Hebrew University and with funding provided by Daniel Mintz and Meredith Berkman, a New York couple interested in biblical archaeology. Now, there is a prophecy, or actually it's a scripture, uh, pertaining to uh, the possible very wall that was just uncovered. Mazar specifically cited the third chapter of Kings 1, 1 Kings, which includes the words, until he, Solomon, had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. I actually have the exact passage. It's 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 1. And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. So it appears that they have just now discovered this wall. The thing that's so interesting about this is that there are so many skeptics out there that say, well, all that we, re we read in the Bible is not true. There was not really such a king as King Solomon. There was not really such a king as King David. There were no societies that advanced back in those days. And yet, the further we investigate, the more the Bible is confirmed as the greatest and most accurate history book in Scripture. You know, there was so much dispute over the truth of the book of Daniel. A lot of scholars had discredited Daniel until they began to, well, the, first of all, the reason they discredited it is because there was no historical record of a king by the name of Belshazzar, and yet Belshazzar played a central role in the book of Daniel. Well, they went into Babylon back in the 1800s, and they began to do some diggings. They came across a cornerstone that read unto, Bel, unto Nebuchadnezzar and to his son Nabonidus and to his grandson Belshazzar. Bingo. 
interesting. So what all of the intelligentsia, all of the scholars said was not true and thus used to attempt to discredit God's word. In this one discovery, all the scholars were proven wrong, and the Bible was once again proven right. Well, it keeps happening in the city of Jerusalem in this day when a lot of people would undermine the validity of scriptures, and in their egotism, they would like to make fun of the scriptures. Every once in a while, there's another major archaeological discovery especially around the city of Jerusalem right now because there's a lot of digging going on. And every discovery seems to prove beyond doubt that the Bible is accurate, that it's the world's most accurate history book. And, of course, if the Bible is accurate historically, uh, we also believe it's accurate spiritually. So interesting find in Jerusalem.